Welcome to Trust the Journey. I'm Jason Maletsky. And I'm Melanie Curtis. Our mission is to live, laugh, love, and learn together with you. We're here to create conscious connections, to grow and contribute through our practice of openness, honesty, vulnerability, humility, and trust. Trusting the entire journey. If you would like to find us on the wider internet, you can go to our website, which is trustthejourney.today, and that's also the same address for all of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Yeah, right on, family. Thank you so much for being with us. Here we go. All right, guys. In this episode, I'm kind of, I'm super excited about this, actually. I am going to be interviewing Jay about his I don't know, epic journey, I guess, hiking the Appalachian Trail. I don't know if it's an epic journey or not. We'll find out, but I'm imagining it is. So I'm excited. Yay. Yeah, cool. I mean, when I was coming up with my list of questions, I really thought, okay, I want to start with just basics. Like, what is it? Where? What are some general stats just so that if people aren't really familiar with it, that we can make sure they know what we're talking about before we dive into talking about your specific experience. For sure. So the Appalachian Trail, uh, commonly referred to as the AT, most people who are hiking it call it the AT. It's one of the three through hikes in North America. So there are three trails that run from north to south on the, on the, in USA, um, the AT is the eastern one running up the Appalachian Mountains. There's the Continental Divide, the CT, which runs up the Rockies. And then there's the PCT, which follows the Sierras and the Cascades and runs from Mexico to Canada. So all three of these are the, the major through hikes in the USA. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So when did you do it? Um, my through hike was in 2012. Okay. Yeah, and my, what, I can imagine, but what was your goal doing it? Like, what was your intent? Was it just, I want to finish it? You know, what was your goal taking this on? Uh, well, the, the whole reason for wanting to do it in the first place, I think, is the goal of, like, what's the drive? What's the motivation? Because, um, I mean, the goal of the journey is the experience it is literally the journey it's pretty ironic type <laughs> of analogy to be discussing right. it's it's actually the journey that is the goal so <laughs> that's um, kind of cool actually i love that yeah it's i it's commonly thought of as a pilgrimage you know it's the type of thing where you change the way that we live life and move through the world to a way that was much more common millennia ago you know where you traveled on foot right. over the land and you saw everything on a day-to-day -day passage and you made your way across the land by your own power and it's a different pace so the goal is to be present in this passage of time and space wow yeah i mean it, it's funny asking the question of what's what was your goal and i've thought it was a different, honestly, a different question to be like, what inspired you? Because it, it sounds like they're the same, but I would also want to ask that question. Like, what inspired you? Was there some impetus? Did something happen in your life that made you go, I'm going to do this? Or was it just something you came up with? You know, like, what was the inspiration behind actually taking it on? For sure, those are totally different questions, right? My first exposure to the Appalachian Trail, to finding out that this existed and that it's something that it's a thing and people do this. They they hike these grand distance. The total length of the trail is 2,170 miles, if I remember correctly. And that's like the official length of it. And I used to travel as a child, um, summer vacations, winter vacations. We would come down to Florida from Toronto and with my mother and we would drive across or under a bridge with the signage that says Appalachian Trail. And I can remember being six or seven years old and seeing the sign and knowing that we're driving through the Appalachian Mountains 
and speaking with my mother and her telling me about it being this grand trail that runs from you know the southern end to the northern end or the north to south along this Appalachian Trail mountain range and so that was my first engagement with it and I remember it that's truly where it started it's been a lingering like an ideology like wow imagine that this is something that people actually do they actually because we drove that you know we drove the whole length from Canada down to Florida and so understanding how far that is by driving it thinking about walking it is just like wow I don't know how is that even possible never mind that you'd be walking through the mountains so I've always been inspired by this ideal that people would take on this type of a physical endurance mission and imagined that it had a lot of mental and like a balance of both mental and physical strength and challenge of endurance involved in it so that was where it started what carried it on in my life was that I continued coming to Florida a lot and I also lived in Massachusetts for a short period and spent some time there and very close to where I was in Northampton, Massachusetts, in the Berkshires there, the Appalachian Trail passes right by. And there's another bridge with a sign on it there. And so through my 20s, I was continually reminded that this existed. And it's always felt like this distant concept that I didn't truly have a relationship to and I didn't truly understand, but I knew that it was going on and it was right there in the woods not that far from where i lived there's this trail and people would go walking by and they were on this epic journey and this personal transformation so i always had it lingering in the back of my mind and coming into my 30s my life goals and my passions the things that were important to me hit a asthma of of achievement and I found myself kind of sitting on the mountaintop and just looking around and not really knowing which way I was gonna head down the mountain next proverbially like where, where am I going from here type of thing and I wanted to take some time to step out of the day-to-day -day that we're all so familiar with that's so comfortable and so ingrained and is so connected you know all the time to cell phones and computers and jobs and all the things and communities and just break away completely from all the things that are so modern day and go back to what is really that deeper connection with with the earth and the self and take on a, an adventure a grand adventure through the forests and the mountains and with my partner at the time yeah oh so. gosh and you're talking about when you became or i guess i mean not that you were the world champion in skydiving correct mm -hmm. is that yeah, so you're correct. on the mountaintop yeah. of skydiving world championship yeah. and you i what i love i hear this and i go wow so cool because there was this intentionality it sounds like in going i want to take on something big i want to have a significant experience because mm -hmm. and that isn't necessarily with a guaranteed outcome it's with a an intent clearly i'm going to disconnect i'm going to have this experience of self i'm going to have this experience with the earth and share it with my partner and whatever other motivations you had I oh I just I love that because that's a thing I think when people really do achieve their goals and then they're like huh oh oh I was so focused on this thing for so long I'm not really sure necessarily what to do next and I I love that you're showing people at least this is how I hear it is that in those moments of oh wait I didn't realize there would be more past me achieving this goal right like well, i've had that yeah, experience you know absolutely this let me share yeah, on something that was a very powerful observation in the experience the the demographic the age group that i was in at the time would have been the 35 to 45 year old range i was 39 at the time 
And of the people who are actually on the trail, we were by far the smallest demographic. The majority of the people who are actually engaging on this hike are either straight out of college where they've just graduated and they've done exactly the same thing. They've met their goal that they've tried. They've been focused on their whole life of getting to getting through college and they finish college and they go, uh -huh, I'm not ready for real life. And they go, I'm going to run into the woods. And then they just keep on walking, you know, and the opposite, the polarity to that is that the rest of the people that you meet are actually retirees. They're people who hit 55, 60, and they're, they're good. They've clocked out of their job and now they're going to do that thing that they've been waiting their whole life to go do. And Honestly, I feel pretty bad for them because they're having a hard time because it's really hard when you're in 55, 65 to start hiking. Wow. The the postgrads who just got out of school, they're like young, you know, they're 20 yeah. and they're just charging and they're like, yeah, cool. I can do this with very, very little support and an incredible level of endurance. And it was very interesting to be in that middle. And we only met a few other people in our journey that um, were truly in that same kind of almost 40 range or just over 40 who unplugged from society to say check it out for a while yeah i just yeah. feel like it's so hugely <clears throat> beneficial to for people listening who have gotten to that point of i've reached a major goal and now i don't know what to do because that can be such a like discouraging place when you find you know what i mean i don't know about you but it's like wonderful having the experience of achieving something huge and wonderful that you wanted to achieve that you focus so much of your life on. And then very daunting and scary to have open space in front of you that you genuinely have not considered. And so it's, it's almost like you don't have to have the answers. You can say, I'm going to go on this and have this experience. It doesn't have to be walking the Appalachian Trail. It could be something else. But I just love that you decidedly filled the space with something that most likely would deliver you some really quality, high quality insights is what I would, it's sort of how I'm hearing it. But, and I'm, oh. I'm also wondering about the actual experience itself, of course, like yeah. what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced when doing it? Or is there more that you'd like to say about it before we go there? Well, for a, for sure, a few things. I mean, I'll definitely echo your sentiment there that I've, when, when I found myself, um, becoming a world championship, the first time I ever won a world championship, I think I've said it before, I've never been more lost in my whole life. As soon as I had, was actually standing there having walked off stage and holding my medal in hand, I didn't know where to go, what to do who I was, like, I was just lost because the point on the horizon that I had been walking towards for so long just s passed me and it wasn't behind me anymore. It was like I was standing there holding it so it was all around and it really changed my perspective as to where I was and who I was and what I was doing. And so I felt like I needed new direction, but I didn't know what the direction was, so I really just needed some time to think. Yeah. And... I'm a huge advocate that time in nature is really, really, really valuable asset in this world, in this life. So I echo what you're saying that that quality time comes from salt for me comes from solitude. It comes from doing deep, hard work and finding the time to think and the time to slow down and the time to connect to self and really just engaging in some practices that are routine and structured and allow for the both sides of the par the paradigm to exist extreme routine extreme structure clear oriented goal and then vast unknown couldn't guess what challenges lay ahead you know constant variables and so it holds this really powerful place of the known and the unknown and just riding that line in between and being okay with it and one of my favorite phrases becomes very very relevant in these kinds of times and that's embrace the insanity nice. yeah yeah and uh really loving being present in that moment so yeah. let me throw some stats at you yeah, so you have too. some numbers the average number of people that start the trail every year with the intention to through hike 
the Appalachian Trail, meaning that they plan to start at one end and walk to the other in some way, shape, or form, is about 3,500 people. And the number of people that finish it every year is about 150. Wow. So it's an incredibly high attrition rate, meaning people just can, they start thinking it's going to be fun and they're going to love it and they get a little ways down the road and they go, oh my, I was not prepared for this. This is way harder than I thought. And I'm laughing so, because that yeah. is so exactly the nature of life coaching work. People come in, <laughs> they say, yes, Mel, let's do this. And they're like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And this is normal, I think, for any version of growth or any great goal we take on. And I say that because I believe life coaching is and doing that deep internal work is a great goal. And so inevitably it has those peaks and troughs, but it's, uh, I like, I actually like that I have the opportunity to say that because I would like people to know it's legit work. It is not easy, you know, and that's why I have such fierce respect for people who go on those internal quests as well. So yeah, anyway, I just love the parallel of that metaphor. Yeah, it's really amazing, actually, to and that was some of the one of the things like when we started out on this mission, <clears throat> we chose into it about two years before actually starting it. So um, I also met people who also just started like they just got a pack and started walking and they didn't even plan to go more than, say, one state. And I met a, um, one fellow along the way. And he's just like, yeah, things were not going good at home. I wanted to go hiking for a weekend. I thought maybe I'll do 100 miles. And then I decided to do 500. And then I decided to do the whole thing. Oh, my goodness. You know? <laughs> and just oh, wow. didn't go back to work kind of thing. And like called the boss from the trail, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> See you in six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, I'm quitting. I don't think I'm coming back kind of thing. I'm having a new life ahead of me. Even better. Of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So... We, we decided two years in advance and did a number of preparation hikes and did a number of iterations of equipment and did a lot of study and rehearsal and working through understanding what we we're doing and what why I feel like we were successful is in completing the whole trail in one through hike uh, was because of the doing the research and understanding that of the 3,500 people who start only 150 make it and why people fail yeah. and why people fall off and addressing those issues and learning about where the big challenges are likely to lie before actually starting the mission. So it is part of the journey is the education period to the true understanding of what to the best of our ability, what is going to lie ahead. Sure. Of, cor of course, piece. Yeah, but you it's never boots on trail, you know, is a great term. It's like we use this in base jumping a lot too, where you're like, what time are we going to be boots on trail? And that's the difference between the time of arriving in the parking lot and the time of actually starting walking. There's a gap in there where you're getting stuff organized and things, people talking and exchanging information. And so that's the same thing with the AT. There was two years of prep work before we were boots on trail. Yeah. And then the trail is a whole other experience. So Yeah, that's amazing. Big... I love that respect. It's funny. That actually makes me think of like Luke Akins and the landing in the net mm -hmm. thing. It's like yeah. people see yeah. that and go, oh, that guy's nuts. And I, I mean, I did a whole video on this, but like I'm sure you've talked with people about this, but I see that as such a great example of what we can do in terms of preparation to mm -hmm. confirm and ensure success to the best of our ability and to really mitigate risk, whether it's actual safety of our well-being physically and mentally, um, but also execution of the goal that we have, in your case, finishing this long, arduous physical and mental journey. Yeah, for sure. So what do you want to know? Yeah. Oh, God, I want to know so <laughs> much. I really am curious about the experience itself also. So you've gone through all this prep, you've really done the work to go, okay, we've done all we can, as much as we can, we feel good about the level of preparation, we've, we are stepping onto the trail with a, a, a feeling of confidence given our work ahead, given that preparation mm -hmm. period and the work that we've done then. So then I, I almost wanna know 
how did it feel stepping on the trail when you first started? Like, tell us maybe about that starting experience first, and then we can go into maybe challenges that you faced. Well, it's an endurance event. So the thing about endurance events is that early on, they're not that challenging and they start off with kind of a false sense of reality. So your first, our first day on trail, the southern terminus of the trail is at Springer Mountain, which is in northern Georgia. And we got dropped off by a friend there. And of course we did, took some photos on the trailhead where we're getting dropped off in the car. And we completely um, photographed the entire journey. And so we start at the southern terminus and the first day we planned a hike of eight miles which is fairly conservative for um, uh, hikers that are in any kind of shape already. And so we planned to do eight mile days for our first week to hold consistency in our pace so we didn't start sprinting on a marathon. Right. And it's very easy to try to do too much or go too fast or carry too much and overdo things early on and it is endurance. So it was a little bit... Um, disappointing in a way that the beginning of the trail would be like you know you hike for a few hours and then we'd stop and we'd be done and we're like we could go more than this and be like no we made a plan stick to the plan hold the lap periods the times so that we don't start hurting physical damage you know and so it's very anticlimactic and it the, our goal was to complete the trail in about five months so the first week, you know, you're just scratching the surface of what's to come. And the thing is, five months is a lot of a year. I mean, you're just talking about almost half of a year. So we started the trail in early March. I believe it was March 7th, if I can recall correctly. So it is winter. Yeah. It is still no buds on the trees. The trees are sticks. There's no leaves anywhere. Everything's still the last falls, leaves. It's still cold. We had a lot of, you know, 20 degree days where you're in gloves and hats and it's properly winter and we have big puffy sleeping bags and nights were very blustery and snowy. And so it wasn't really fun at the beginning. It seemed this kind of like, oh, God, what's this? Is, uh, I don't know. And you're encountering a lot of other people that are starting at the same time. So kind of sussing up the characters that are around you and sussing up yourself and kind of looking at where we're at bigger picture and how we feel about the planning that we've done and the preparation that we've done. And it was reassuring to get started to feel like it wasn't that hard at the beginning. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you need a pass to do it? Like, do you have to sign up, you know, like, cause I'm thinking of the one time I went to Yosemite with my friend, like we had to, you know, plan ahead to like be yep. at midnight ready to get the pass. Is this, is there anything similar with the Appalachian Trail? No, it's open to anybody who wants to do it any time, but during the busy time of year, when most people are starting, there are trail um, angels, volunteers who sit at the trailhead and record everybody's information as they start. And then at the halfway point, there is the official, um, I believe it's the headquarters for the conservancy is in West Virginia. And so then again, you can stop in and check in at that location. And then at the t Northern terminus, there's another check-in. So there, these are the three points where you do officially walk in, sign a book, date, photograph who you are, where you started, where you've been, that kind of thing, where you're going. So we, I believe we checked in on March 7th, 2012, yeah. if I remember correctly. I mean, I have to, re I genuinely want to know about the challenges because I cannot imagine again, and it doesn't necessarily have to be everything, but what's a, a challenge that sticks out as like, this was hard and we got through it. Like, was there any point that you thought about stopping like that type of like, oh my God, because five months, 2,200 miles, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that is, I hear that and I go, Wow. I don't have a whole lot of significant hiking experience. So I'm asking these questions from a place of really relative newbiness in terms of a big hike experience like this. The only experience yeah. I have that even comes close is a few days in Yosemite, like I just mentioned. And so 
I recognize, I feel like I recognize, I don't really understand what this exacting type hiking big project experience t it, like takes, you know what I mean? So the biggest challenge I'd say is truly education and being well prepared because fact of the matter is it doesn't matter how strong you are you're going to wear yourself down you're going to get stronger at the same time you're going to get weaker um so you know what i mean by that is it's a, such an endurance challenge to continue holding a pace over such a long period of time that parts of you are going to get stronger and stronger and stronger i mean your cardio is going to become ridiculously good respiratory ridiculously good and leg strength just out of this world but at the same time i mean you're going to burn off all fat on your body and you're going to become very very lean and physically it's a pounding on the joints and it can your feet grow at least a shoe size from all the wear and tear so that's puffy sore really beat up feet so the challenge i think the first the biggest challenge is truly in education and understanding what how to run the long race and how to be the tortoise and not the hare um because it really the mental part the mental challenge the mental part of us wants to like run ahead but the tortoise knows to just hold that steady pace and that applies to everything it's it's in strategy the greater challenge the greatest challenge on route isn't the mud or the rain or finding a good place to camp it's the strategy that you hold for yourself mentally to be able to make the decisions that are necessary along the way in order to maintain a level of mental fortitude that's necessary to not want to reach for the I quit handle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. That's huge. I, it, it's, oh my gosh, it's, you have no idea. Like, it is looming. Like, all you got to do is pull that handle. Just pull, pull, and you're just going to be like, that's it. I'm out of here. I, you, see, you see it happen. I mean, you just got to think by the numbers, right? Thousands of people start and only a hundred and change finish. So that's just people every single day around you just going, fuck this, I'm out, I'm going home, you know, and pulling the handle and they're ejecting and they're like, I'm out and, and it's all around you. So you have to have this, this like blinders to that as a potentiality. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I also am curious, like, what would you say would be a reason that would, va you know, a valid reason not to invalidate other people's choices? Of course, mm -hmm. people, if they decide to stop, that's completely valid. I mean it more like, if what would have been something that would have had you actually stop? Well, we had to stop a couple of times due to injury. Okay, injury. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. When I, I was injured a couple times, and at those times, I couldn't carry on. It didn't make sense to put my body in greater physical harm than it was already being damaged. So at those times, we stopped. We never really left the trail, mm -hmm. which is a difference. Um, some people choose to take periods of time off and then maybe go to a family engagement, like somebody's getting married or they have something they need to attend to. And we chose to do what people would call a purist through hike. And that was to start at one terminus and travel on foot in one direction the whole way and walk every single mile, every single step of trail to the other terminus in one go all the way through. And there's a thousand different variations of that, um, whether it's doing like a, a, a lot of people, I met a few people who did a state a year. Oh, wow. And they, so they, every year they take a month or a week or whatever it takes to hike one of the states. And so over 14 years, they hike the entire Appalachian Trail by doing it in chunks. And some people do something called a flip-flop where you like start at the southern terminus and then hike north to the midpoint 
and then jump on a plane or a car and drive to the north point and start hiking south and end up back at the mid so that half of it's done hiking north and half of it's done hiking south and there's all kinds of different ways to mix it up um, i always just really liked that the idea that since it was a pilgrimage to to us that we wanted to just basically walk the trail from one end to the other as if there weren't another way to do it yeah it's yeah. like that's the way the idea the goal the mission that inspired you which is super cool and i also love that you're pointing to there are different ways to do things and mm -hmm. when we choose one way or the other likely we'll get maybe the same things maybe we'll get different things out of it in our imagination or extrapolation of that forward like what do what are we going to get you know i yeah. a part of me wants to ask too about the blinders thing before we move forward about because i imagine people please, listening yeah, please do. what please do yeah i imagine ask. people listening hear that like oh you have to just you see people quitting all around you you have these all these sort of i uh, just uh, you're seeing all this stuff there's lots of opportunities and lots of reasons and lots of of brain conversation internal dialogues that says okay you can just pull the pull the i quit handle yada yada you've gotten this far this is so good whatever it's saying in your your mind and i would wonder how do you keep those blinders on like how do you actually do that how did you do that because i imagine people are like oh, i'd like to be able to do that i'd like to have a bit more grit a bit more discipline or whatever it is that it takes to keep those on and and continue forward with a firm commitment to the goal you know what i mean yeah absolutely i have to say that one of the things that definitely needs to be mentioned here that is of true value to recognize is that we were a team and as a team we committed to the same goal and that commitment was unquestioned and clearly defined written down how do we want to do it why do we want to do it what are we trying to accomplish like we clearly said when where how all the things and and we m found the middle ground it wasn't just like this is what i want do you want what i want it's like let's talk about all the things and figure out what really makes sense like strategize what the day number is based on our training and what we think it should look like and all the research information so collectively setting goals that we felt were achievable for ourselves based on self-evaluation and prior preparation and training and then also choosing to challenge ourselves to a certain level so we set a goal of 158 days and our dream was to make it in like 153 days and we left ourselves up to like 180 days mm -hmm. if we needed more time if we like had injury that needed rest or anything that slowed us down then we gave ourselves a big window beyond so that we could meet our goal of completion yep. even if it meant it took a lot longer and in reality we ended up arriving at one day away from the end of the trail at 149 wow. and we took we took the last day off at the 149th day we just like let's take a day off we're four days ahead of schedule <laughs> you know so we actually just took a full what they call a zero day a day when you do no hiking so that we could be fully rested and do the last seven or eight miles or whatever was left on the 150th day so we beat our our goal by three days but that comes down to all the work like the the reality of why we were able to complete it and where that group that grit that top part, it's not grit it's structure and planning and sticking to the plan and being flexible to it where it needs to be flexible but also being adhering to that and just and just holding having an achievable goal based on knowing our level of performance you know yeah that is so awesome to hear i'm such a huge massive believer in teamwork i mean that is oh, yeah. for 10 Mass years 
I, and I keep going back to the life coaching only because I love so much the epic journey parallel, as I said earlier, but I've always framed the work that I do in that area of my life as a team. We're a team for, for our shared goals. You have a certain set of goals as a person that's, you know, and I'm, and we, I'm a teammate, I'm your teammate. So whatever those goals are, we'll, we'll talk about them. It's like basically everything you just said. And that inspires me so much. I don't know why I just, I mean, I'm sure I could have, but I'd go into a long diatribe, <laughs> which I will not do today. Uh, <laughs> Next episode. Next episode, long diatribe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, oh, I just love that. Do you think it would be achievable? I mean, how do you think it would have been different without having a teammate? I mean, I know that's sort of a weird question Ooh. to ask, but I'm just no. curious, you know? It's not. I actually did a eight day solo hike as one of my training hikes early on. I tried out the idea of a longer hike and did it by myself. And I have to say it, it was kind of boring. Nice. I enjoy the companionship and the communication and the sharing and sharing in in all aspects sharing in pain and sharing in struggle and sharing in laughter and comedy and sharing in embracing the insanity that's the most fun i like i think the most fun part is when it gets to the point of breaking point and then you you just teeter back and forth on the edge of like i don't know who's got control but it's not me <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know and <laughs> And you just allow it to just keep riding that line, you know, but as long as you just keep moving forward, it, it just, you know, it's like a motorcycle or bicycle. Just keep it moving. Don't stop or to fall over. Oh my God. You know? The life is comedy premise. The tone that is, oh, yeah. oh, that's a, you know me, that's a core belief I hold. And it's so, the extremity of life can be so freaking hilarious sometimes. And I love that you're like in this experience, we absolutely accessed that. It's our savior. Yeah. This is not. A, this is. This is. I mean, this is a bigger thing for life as a, as a metaphor for life, right? I, you know how much I like that paradigm. Life is a metaphor for life. If if you don't allow your at least for I'm speaking for myself. If I don't allow myself to just fall into this place of this is ridiculous and this is hilarious <laughs> and it's absolutely just so. Oh, such a, a, a joke it's comedy everywhere if i don't do that in these experiences i don't think i could i don't think i can do it because if i start taking it too seriously then it starts to become unfun and then i don't want to do it anymore and so life is that same paradigm you know if, and I, I mean i'll just i'll just say if i look at the world of government at the same time i go this is hilarious and if I attach myself to it and take it too seriously, I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm going to want to quit, yes. you know, and be like, I don't want any part of this. This is ridiculous, you know? <laughs> but if I look at it and just go, this is hilarious. That's great. Oh then God. it's this, and there's so many times in life where it's like that. Right? Oh my God. Yes. For me. Yes. Oh God. Yeah. I deeply, I definitely look around life all the time with a lens of comedy I mean, again, not that there aren't moments of seriousness and, and, and intensity and focus and connection and love and all the other things that, that are amazing in life. Just to say that, oh, dang, that's, that's a lens that persists in my life experience, and I'm glad it does. I'm glad I choose that so often. It, it's one of my deeply spiritual connective pieces in myself. I truly believe that at its core the universe and when i say the universe i mean all things you i everybody else all things that exist all forms of life all forms of matter all forms of energy is hilarious i do too it's winking at us it, all the time like ah, yeah. oh you thought this what about this wink <laughs> yeah i'm like god totally. damn it god damn yeah. it universe the universe has a sense of humor <laughs> yes. the best sense of humor ever <laughs> so Back to your story and the epic journey and this massive accomplishment. Obviously, you finished it. You finished it ahead of your goal. I'm now, I want to know a couple of things. So 
the big takeaways definitely, but just stay with me for a second because maybe one is more relevant or more t top of mind than the other right now. I'm imagining that completion point and wondering how it juxtaposes the completion point of the world championship. Like, did you feel just as lost? Were you more clear? Did you find insight? Like, you know what I mean? So what was the sort of end point experience and or your biggest takeaways? That's a really good question. I feel like that is very powerful um, to guide this, this interview to a deeper point. And so excellently done. Thank you. Um, and I'm genuinely curious. Like that's where yeah. my curiosity does go to depth. And if, if we even highlight that for people listening, you know, keep being curious. Ask, mm -hmm. ask more deeply if you are wondering and wanting to know those things. Because, yeah, thank you. So I would have to say that there was a very different experience in the completion. It's interestingly ironic in the sense that the journey to becoming a world championship was decades long. The journey to complete the Appalachian Trail by foot was actually 150 days. In all reality, two and a half years um, from initiation of, you know, starting momentum. But I found myself, I would say we found ourselves much more grounded in the completion of the of the journey as it truly felt how do i say this the what i didn't know as an athlete training to become a world champion was that the important part was the journey nice. right i thought it was about becoming the champion and getting like winning like the 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 end the last line in the story yeah. and what i knew in the journey on the appalachian trail on the at was that the, the completion of it is the cherry on the sunday but the cherry on the sunday is not the whole sunday yeah. and, and so it was a very going into it experiencing it living it being present to it was a very different ride as a whole and that was so much more gratifying. And when I came out of it, ironically, I went back to doing what I was doing before. I went back to doing some more training, but my training felt like I had felt during the time on the trail where I was like, I was in my training. I was loving my presence to being in that day, in that jump, in that moment, in that instant and the goal ahead was all, so much less relevant i really didn't care per se how well i performed at the competition that i was training for i cared more about how much i enjoyed training oh, so amazing so amazing i uh i feel like that is such a amazing powerful share for anyone who finds themselves really attached to outcomes and has difficulty. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, oh that my sounds, God. <laughs> right? It sounds so basic, <laughs> but like, that's a pain point for so many, you know, oh, like, I'll be happy still. when, I'll be happy when. It's like, oh, that is such a, a tragedy, I think, in the human experience. I love that we are lending insight to you know what I mean? Something that a, a mindset shift, just the possibility at all that a person can s basically stop being attached to outcomes out in the future while still caring about them. Because it's not that you're not caring about them, but you're caring and putting your success and attaching your success, quote unquote, to how you feel and how you're being in your life and your, and your goal, goal path. Oh, I just think that's wildly inspiring. The um, the day to day, when I mean you get bored because time is passing and and the same thing is happening all the time. And I guess this is another one of these wonderful metaphors: is that day after day, the same arduous journey. You get up, 
you pack up your tent, you make breakfast, you start walking, you walk until lunch, you eat lunch, you walk until dinner, you put up your tent, you go to bed. You know, it's it's pretty arduous in its doldrum of repetition. And at the same time, it's ever changing and new. So this the awareness to that was very profound especially with regard to the seasons changing because we got to witness the winter spring summer transition so from being completely bare and forest with nothing green to being fully lush and present to the the height of summer and every single day spent in that environment of absolutely not na na absolute nature the whole time it really changes your clock you the time relevance You're like oh five months is such a long time and no it's not it's like one shift it's it's literally a one click on the clock you know from being cold to warm and that's going to click again from being warm to cold and so you could just think of that that's a polarity shift from one side to the other from one side to the other so we went one click on the clock which felt like 150 clicks every little tiny bit of the way and that's a total of six million clicks if you count your steps wow so wow gosh would you the, uh, yeah go the on. one more thing i'd like to accent that with Please. is that in the moments when the doldrum of the day-to-day -day starts the grind is happening and the mind starts wandering and the attention and interest wary or focus goes on to pain or suffering or the parts of it's just very much like meditation it's crazy then um i found it so incredibly powerful to learn how to attach to a positive internal vibration rather than allowing a negative internal vibration to become the dominant one. Say that again? I'm not so quite, I'm, I feel like walking I'm walking along. I yeah. really understand yep. this, yeah. Okay, I'm walking along and my feet hurt and my knees hurt and I'm tired and my pack straps are rubbing me raw and I could keep going down this list of things that that suck and that hurt and why I'm tired and why I don't want to walk anymore and how stupid this trail is and why did I start this mission and this just sucks and I I'm that's it I'm quitting or I can go man my feet really hurt today yeah man my knees are sore too Whew! yeah yeah this hurts dang <laughs> yes yes it does it sure does yeah I started this mission yeah that was me <laughs> go me mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to finish this mission, mm -hmm. you know, and just got to go a little bit to the, like, embrace that, the positive side, like I can go down the rabbit hole of negativity, and I can, or I can turn up the, the volume, turn up the intensity, and just go, these things are realities, but there is a reality here, which also exists if I acknowledge it, and that is that this is fun. Yeah. And that is so huge, too, because that's so relevant, obviously, in any area of life where we start to go down a negative thought cycle. And I almost am thinking about how, you know, like, oh, I could focus on the positives. And then there's that experience of resisting that as reality. No, the, the reality is the negative. You know, like the, the mind really wants to resist can can for some really want to resist those positive thoughts and i i bring up what we resist persists and so like it's not necessarily an easy skill set to learn and master that mindset stuff you know and to really say okay i'm gonna shift my mindset to a positive one and really go there that's like yeah. a thing you know what I mean? As opposed to being like, I'm in resistance now, oh, but I'll just be positive. That doesn't 
obviously actually energetically help us, but really like going, okay, what is the actual for real positive that I truly believe is real and positive? Because that has an energetic effect on me. That is different than just saying the positive thing. You know what I mean? So I just, I acknowledge that too. And I acknowledge that as such a massive, powerful skill in any area of life. Yeah, it's mandatory. I mean, the we could tell on the trail instantly upon meeting somebody else whether or not they were going to complete the whole trail or not. Wow. What instantly. was the sign? What was the telltale signs? Well, the conversations start exactly the same way every single time. Every time you meet somebody like, hey, what's your name? Uh, how far are you going? Got it. You know, and people would say, uh, you're like, oh, are you hiking the whole trail? And you'd be like, well, that's the plan. And I'm like, well, that's the plan is not, yes, I'm hiking the whole trail. <laughs> so you could always hear definitive variations on explanation of what was happening. They're like, yeah, I sure hope so. You know, and like, no, they're not going to make it. Yeah. Well, that speaks to commitment. I've heard this with people talking about, I mean, this happened with my publishing my, publishing my book. Once I actually committed, I'm like, I am, it is, it is going to be done by this date. That's when it happened as opposed to, and people, when they quit smoking or do something else, that's, that's tough. I'm just recognizing really hard things, completing the Appalachian trail tough. Like it's almost like, it seems like it requires a commit, like an unwavering commitment, which it's hard for me to speak, like to say, because then I go, well, what about flexibility? But there is something about a commitment that doesn't necessarily mean it has to happen in a certain exacting way. Like you guys had scope for it to happen, but your but making it happen was, you know, your your commitment. What happened? What would you have done if you went past 180 days? You know, did you have or is that just something you're like, we're not going to do that. We're not going to think about that. We're going to box our mind to this, to this. And then if we have to cross a different bridge, we will. Like, what was your experience no, with the that? Reason, the reason why we had it set to that date was because we had other plans. We wanted to be done by, because it's like, how much time had we taken off work? How much time had we allocated towards this? What are the things that we have coming up in our life post being on the trail? So... It was boxed in by these future events we had on our calendar. But I, I wanted to say something with regard to the flexibility because it's, I think it's a very important thing to recognize is you got to think about it like a, a guitar string or a piano string where the goal is to travel the length and the, the, the line is pretty straight and pretty tight, but it is going to waver a lot during that journey and that doesn't mean you know a guitar string's tight it it's pretty stiff right but it's flexible at the same time it's got a sure direction that it's traveling in but there's going to be a lot of variation as to what's going on depending on where you touch it or how hard you pluck it and that is the same as the journey down the trail because our mission changed radically through the, the i mean there were times when we were like all right well this plan that we were that we had made we're gonna toss that and we're gonna pick up a new plan based on what we've learned in the process of committing so some of the things that we like one of the things that i committed to was finding a pair of shoes that i was really happy with and then buying a bunch of pairs of them and having them shipped along the way so that we pick up a new pair of shoes about every 500 miles or so because they're destroyed after about 500 miles and i stayed with the same pair of shoes the whole time but my my wife um, fernanda she got about two-thirds of the way through and she's like i need different shoes these are not even though i bought five pairs of these they're going to stay in the box and i'm going to stop and we're going to go to a shoe store and we're going to find some shoes that i like better and change the plan because it needed to have a variation shift to one degree, like a retuning of the string in order to keep it on path. Because the sometimes we make choices that we think are best for us at the time, but they're not truly what we need to get us from one place to another. 
I love that, that you can only actually know that you needed to make that different choice once in the experience itself that is informing you of that new knowledge. Yeah, amazing. I love it. Well, if you had any final thoughts for the listeners as to what you would want them to take away from your experience, what would it be? Well, I learned some very, very powerful insights in this experience. And it's strange that when you ask me that, it could be such a vast, like, could come back with any kind of answer about, you know, what I learned or felt or experienced or teamwork or, you know. And I think the biggest thing that I came to be aware of is the the forest as a whole, that this ecosystem, this is a very earthy, connected to the planet thing, um, that there used to be a lot more trees on this earth than there is now. And trees are what make soil. Decomposing wood, which is being decomposed by um, mycelium, the um, fungal undergrowth in the forest is what decomposes the wood. That's what creates all the soil that is sustaining us today. The soil that exists on the earth now is created by the forest that we once had. All those forests have grown and died and turned to soil. A lot of that soil has gone through its lifespan and it's turned to dust and it's now deserts and it's gone. But if we keep cutting down all the trees, then there's not going to be more new soil being formed. And if we don't have new soil being formed, then we don't have what's most important to sustaining our life, which is this system of replenishment for ourselves and the the fungal mats the mycelium that lives underneath if you spend a lot of time in the forest you'll realize the ground is actually very soft it's not so hard everywhere and we need to protect our forests we need to protect our rivers there are lifeblood there are veins they carry the fluid that we're made of so a deep deep connection to nature is just so so profound to leave these experiences with. Oh, I love it. And I I think I have learning about the mycelium and the uh, that we can share in the show notes about the Rogan Joe Rogan episode with Paul Stamets which was very yeah. enlightening Powerful. about yeah. fungal networks and stuff like that. That learning more about the earth has been really enlightening for me as well and anyway I love thank you so much for sharing Jay. This has been super cool. That hour went like instantly fast. I feel like it was over in a second. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, Welcome. Well, dang. Yeah, of course. And just to continue with our new sharing what we're experimenting with, that's yes. uh, so I'll quickly share. I thought, well, just to dive into it, I'm experimenting with, and I have been for a while, I'm experimenting with saying thank you where i formerly would say sorry i used to be and i still am an inappropriate quote unquote inappropriate sorry sayer in certain experiences but that is something i've been working on and really consciously experimenting with saying instead of saying like oh sorry i'm you know just got here, I would say something like, thank you for your patience. Not that I'm really late that much, <laughs> I'm wildly time conscious, but, but like, that's an example of like, instead of saying, sorry, I'm late, I would say, oh, thank you so much for your patience. You know, something like that, having certainly communicated and keeping integrity in my word and stuff. But yeah, so that's something I'm working on and I like it. I am definitely continuing it and I will keep you posted. What about awesome. you? I I love that one. It's one that I've been practicing for some time as well. And I've seen the change in myself as a result of having practiced that. And I appreciate people more is the outcome of that is I end up valuing the people rather than there being a devalue in the end result. Um, so this is a really simple one and it's come and gone at times in my life. But lately I've really felt it to be a powerful present piece of being present and of self-love and of doing something really simple for myself that really makes a big difference and that's making my bed yeah cool making my bed every day just getting up and sometimes i walk around like ah whatever you know and i go no no jay make your bed 
go take two seconds, tidy it up, stack it up. And when you walk past it next time, it looks better. I feel better about it. When I go to crawl into bed at night, it's nice. And yeah, it's simple, but it matters. It's those little things of commitment to little pieces of structure like that, that are, that are helping me on my road to having consistency in my life that supports my inner sense of well-being totally the energetic yeah. impact of that stuff well i love it my friend yeah. anything else before we dive out of this one no i just want to say thank you that was great i really enjoyed recalling a lot of the values of the experience and it was i for some reason uh, i kind of expected that we would talk ab about a lot of the standard factoid type stuff a lot more that comes up in a lot of the descriptions and things that you read and a lot of that kind of stayed in the background and we talked more about the meat and potatoes of, of the why which i love so much so thank you you're welcome meat and potatoes and guys everyone listening as always thank you so much for being with us and being a part of our fam trust the journey family <laughs> Yeah, if you got value from this episode, please help us out, pay it forward, share. Anybody that you think might appreciate, enjoy the episode, send it on to them and uh, help us get the word out. Yeah, trust the journey dot today on all the social medias. Catch you on Instagram. We post a lot of extra value over on Instagram, so go and follow us there if you want. Um, and we've mentioned it a few times. We are also on a mission to create community and our initial goal with patreon is 50 50 people supporting us at any level so it could be a dollar a month whatever you're inspired to do that's one of our goals you can go to the links on the youtube or you can go to our website trustthejourney.today and scroll down and there's an orange button where it says donate to patreon and you can join us there and you'll end up in our private Facebook group, which is where we're expanding the conversation even beyond these episodes. So yeah, if you're inspired, by all means, join us. And if not, that's super cool too. Being just listening and sharing is also amazing. Fantastic. Absolutely. If you are inspired, no matter what, thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of our family. And remember, keep laughing, keep loving. 